hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl breathe life and i'm back with another video if you're new here thank you so much for clicking on this video on my channel i talk about how i was able to grow my type 4 hair to hip length i also discuss true crime stories and anything on my mind at the moment that i would like to share with you i will be presenting 20 key facts just for the sake of clarification for those who don't know about this case orin and orson west whose original names are classic and sincere were reported missing by their adoptive parents Giselle and Jacqueline West on December 21st of 2020. Chavel reports that he and the two toddlers were in the yard and he stepped inside for a brief moment and when he went back outside the children were gone. In this video I will also be discussing statements from the biological mom Ryan Dean and her father. So let's get right into it. Check out a few video clips of the biological mom, Ryan Dean, from news outlets. <laughs> they said that she said she was wrapping gifts and she let my two kids out in the backyard because she didn't want them to see the gifts. But you didn't let the other kids out. Where were the other kids? Why my two just go back there? <laughs> At night, she said it was dark and it's cold right now. So I know it was cold then. So I don't believe it. So when did she tell you this? Where were you when she told you this? I just came here 45 minutes when nobody was here. 45 minutes to an hour and we knocked on the door and it took them a minute to come and he came out and he want to say he's sorry and all that. I just don't feel in my heart that I, it's something. They're not. <laughs> Do you have a relationship with these parents? I don't the know parents? them. <laughs> I don't know them. They did something. I feel like they did something and they know something. They did something and I feel my kids is somewhere around here. I can feel it and I feel like they're in the house and I feel like they did something. They've been missing since 5 p.m. yesterday, which is, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> Dean says that imagining her boys are gone is a nightmare. She says that she misses them every day and is heartbroken that she isn't involved in their lives. Dean hopes that her children are okay and that she will be able to see them again. If they find my kids, can they just give them back to me? Whatever I have to do to work on it, to get them. I'm, I have a home, I have a car, I have a job. I, I have money, it's nothing to provide for them. I don't come, I come from a good background as you can see. And I don't understand, I just want my babies. If they find them, just give them back to me, please. That's all I want. If they just find them, I just want my kids back to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion when i observed her she appears to be a grieving mom who is really hurting and upset by this situation now i'm going to read a couple of statements from the biological mom that was placed on her facebook page first she says that she completed both parenting classes and then she says yes they were placed in foster care upon me getting off work and my son's cry was not normal. I took him to the hospital being a responsible parent and they took my child from there. I fought hard to get them back. Those that know me personally knows I was trying to do all the classes, maintain a household and go to work so that they would have something to come back to even though they had everything they needed and a good home when they got taken. And they only took classic because he was a relative to Sincere, my son. And I had just had him and got him out of the NICU. Due to him being four pounds and me having him early because of the stress of trying to get his older brother back before he came along. 
I originally took Sincere to the hospital because I felt like there was something wrong with him when I got off work. Only thing that I did not comply with was the drug counseling classes because I did smoke marijuana here and there, but that's nothing that's going to make me unfit for my kids. And I had a medical marijuana card and the ebony counseling would not treat me for marijuana, which is legal. And that's what they said. I even presented a letter to the judge with them stating they don't want to counsel me because it's just marijuana. It's legal. And I have a medical marijuana card. The judge turned me down and said, well, go find something. I did what I had to do. And those who know me personally know I love my kids. I don't care if a kid is blue, purple, red, pink. I still love any child. Those who know me personally know this should have never happened to me. So before blanks want to judge, understand the person and the story on why certain blank happened. Thank you. Have a blessed night. In another post, she says the following. I don't know those adoptive people. I never knew they stayed in California City until I found out my boys were missing. Hell, I didn't even know they stayed in Bakersfield. They used to be secretive about where they would park, so purposely, after one of my visits, I watched from the window in the lobby to see where they parked and it was very far but i saw the white van then after another visit i told jacqueline let me talk to you i'm not a bad mother and i don't know what is gonna go on but if the worst comes please let me be in my children's life i am not a bad mother she said i definitely see that but trezell barely wanted to even look at me they gave me a sick feeling talking to them then after the last visit they denied gifts and i never heard heard or seen from them again until this happened. I have not seen them or my kids since December of 2018 when they denied me and my mother Christmas gifts for my boys. I told those workers my kids are losing weight. Why are they crying every time they get picked up from visits? Where are their snacks during the visit? Why are their sippy cups empty? No extra cups of juice in the diaper bag, no purified water, one diaper, sometimes no diapers and no wipes, no haircuts. I had to start bringing snacks to visits for my boys and they were eating like they were very hungry. Classic would pick up toys that resembled food and try to eat it. Dirty receiving blankets, ugly clothes. I told social workers. I cried to social workers and they did not care. Do I need to compare pictures from when Latoya had them versus the pictures when these idiots had them? Because I have videos and pictures and I will. If you're wondering who Latoya is, she's a previous foster parent to Classic and Sincere, AKA Orin and Orson West. Visually speaking, when I look at those pictures, they do look like they got skinnier. As you can see in the following pictures of Orin and Orson West with the biological mom, you can see them smiling. They look happy. They look very healthy. I ask that you please be respectful in the comment section to the biological mom. Now I'm going to read a couple of statements from the maternal grandfather, Ryan Dean's father. His name is Leaf Dean. And he shared this statement with analyzing life. This is what he said. My name is Leaf O'Neill Dean. I'm the biological grandfather of Orson and Orin Dean. I'm the father of Ryan Dean. I definitely have a crucial statement concerning Kern County's lack of judgment concerning my grandbaby's welfare and placement to the incompetent foster parents, Trezell and Jacqueline West. Their lack of concern and sympathy screams a deafening unconcern that lacks sympathy. Yes, my daughter Ryan as a young mother had issues, but for Kern County's negligence, of placing my grandbabies with these people whom obviously have no visible concerns about the well-being of my grandbabies 
shows Kern County has a huge part of negligence and incompetence with the approval and placement with these individuals. As of my natural responsibility of Ryan, Camille Dean, Orson Dean, and Oren Dean, we will be acquiring legal representation against Kern County's lack of judgment and negligence, as well as the West family for child endangerment. I see now Kern County has started a campaign to lessen the validity of their mishandling of my daughter's case. The Dean family in Kern County is quite large. So as far as Kern County's vetting system, it was not represented in the comments by spokesperson Jana Slagle. Kern County didn't call immediately family members until my grandbabies were in the absolute last stage of adoption. So her statements are a simple cover to rectify Kern County's negligence. So at this time we're vetting attorneys from different jurisdictions out of Kern County to represent us in this case. It would be a total conflict of interest for any legal representation from Kern County to represent us in these matters due to the history and on how minority families are underrepresented. Whatever mistakes were made with my daughter concerning her boys doesn't warrant to what's happened to my grandbabies. The blame is not on my daughter. It's on Kern County for their negligence. It absolutely hurts me to hear my daughter cry when she tried very hard to get her babies back. Kern County made her jump through loops to get them back and made a rush to judgment on giving my grandbabies to these horrible people while all along telling us family members that the kids were going to be placed with a doctor and a teacher. They didn't give any immediate family members adequate time to acquire these babies until they were in the last stage of adoption. A lot of people have been rushing to judgment concerning the biological mother, but unless you have been in her shoes, you really can't understand uh, what she's going through. When I look at her, I see a grieving mother. I see a mother who is broken, who has lost her children, and who's hurting. That's what I see. But when I look at the adoptive parents, I don't see any concern at all. It really breaks my heart for her to be going through something like this. So I'm really sympathetic to her, regardless of what anyone might say or think. I do believe she's hurting. I was able to gather key facts from Heather Dingley and confirm that they all are true. Here is the first key fact. The home of Travell and Jacqueline West in California City has been searched five times by law enforcement agencies. The FBI, Bakersfield Police, and the DA are currently working on the case with the California City Police Department. Travell and Jacqueline West's backyard was excavated and soil was collected and sent to forensics. Trained scent dogs and cadaver dogs have been through the house and in the backyard. Jacqueline and Travell have boarded up the windows of the house due to their home being targeted by vandals. The family dog is not named Chalk. Jacqueline and Travell are not currently living in their California city home. Jacqueline and Trezell have not been instructed to stay in the state. Jacqueline and Trezell are not considered suspects by the police department. Foul play is suspected. Abuse or neglect by the adoptive parents have not been ruled out. Jacqueline and Trezell West moved from Bakersfield, California to California City in September of 2020. Jacqueline and Trezell West have made one public statement and has remained silent after. The extended adoptive family has also made statements but have distanced themselves from Jacqueline and Trezell West. The pictures from missingkids.org are from 2019 and were taken from Trezell's brother's Facebook page. All family members, including the biological and adoptive family, have cooperated with law enforcement. Large scale searches have been conducted in California City as well as 
Jacqueline and Chazelle West's previous location in Bakersfield. Law enforcement has followed every lead and tip whenever possible. Many items were removed from the home by law enforcement, some of which included computers and cell phones. Home security camera footage has been collected from neighboring houses by the police department. Lastly, the California City Department has not announced any leads. I want to thank all of my subscribers, all of the people who have shown concern, who care about these two little boys. I just want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to this story, to share this story, to comment, to even watch any videos that are out there concerning Orin and Orson West. I ask that you continue to keep Sincere and Classic, also known as Orin and Orson West, in your prayers and on your mind. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Until next time, have a blessed one. Bye.